The Animele GFX project is funded by patrons. Please consider subscribing so that we can continue to fund these awesome overalls. So this month, the patrons voted to overhaul the boy prince himself, Captain Falcon. Despite the fact that Falcon's specials are situational to say the least, I felt like it was worth showing him some love. I sent out an early access review copy to Salt, and so far her first impressions of the pack have been overwhelmingly positive, so I feel great about the changes. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and jump into the changes I made to Captain Falcon. Right out of the gate, the thing that stood out to me the most was how mid the original Falcon Punch model was. I'd seen some mods that addressed this before, so I knew overhauling it had to be possible. Unfortunately, model work is not something I have in my wheelhouse, but since the Patreon has sort of been popping off, I decided to utilize all of this month's proceeds to enlist the help of the talented Chief Neef. A lot of what he accomplished is sort of over my head, so I'll just let him explain the experience. Yo, this is Chief Neef. I'm going to be showing you guys my process making this model, and hopefully you'll learn some things about melee model editing. Since this is anime, like, it has to fit in with that aesthetic. And I did remember there is an F-Zero anime, but the Falcon Punch in it is just He's just punching a guy so hard that electricity comes out. You know, there's no bird. Then I decided to look at the Falcon Punch and Smash Ultimate, and I think it actually looks perfect for what I'm going for. It's very cartoony, but also very beautiful looking, so it would fit right in with Animale. So now we got our model open in Blender, and I'm just gonna skip straight to the finish model and then explain backwards what I did. Here's the finish model, and it looks way different, but that's just because I have vertex color displayed instead of textures. Vertex color is basically painting these individual points on a polygon. So why did I use that? Well, initially I just planned on painting the white outline effect over the textures, but testing in game, I realized the texture has a scroll animation on it, so the effect wouldn't work. So I decided to use vertex color since you can overlay that on top of a texture and it won't scroll with the texture. Another useful thing with vertex color is the fade out effect. So all these black and gray parts near the end, that's where it's gonna fade out. And this was very useful with these trails here since in the original model, there's just a jarring you know, cut off. So this looks much better. I also upped the poly count of the model, so it's much more detailed now. You know, the legs aren't looking like PS1 drumsticks. And finally, the last change I made was opening up the beat. So originally, I wanted to do an animation to match the sound effect that plays in game, but I found that the entire Falcon Punch animation is just so short that you wouldn't even notice it opening. So I just left it permanently open and the effect works much better. There's one last change I want to make and that is adding pixel processing, which is just fancy blending effects. So this is what the model looks like without it. And now here's the model with pixel processing. So there you go, that's how I made this model. Uh, definitely an abridged explanation, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I plan on making some beginner friendly tutorial videos and I mean like super beginner friendly. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to my YouTube, peace. For the main texture, I utilized Wind Waker's Fire as inspiration. I created some temp assets that I fed into Stable Diffusion with the output being a tileable result. After that, I ended up mirroring the effect to produce this kind of tribal pattern I really liked. Then I spruced up the particle simulation to give the effect a little oomph as well. The original effect produced more or less three of the exact same fire effects at varying brightnesses. I chose to replace each one with an independent texture to inject a little energy into the animation and kind of tie the whole effect together. One spark particle texture, one fireball texture, and a dissipating flame texture as well. The last thing I wanted to address was the charging animation. The original effect had a concentric circle lens flare effect that I've actually always really loved. But with that being said, Falcon is charging a massive fireball punch, so I wanted to make sure that the energy gathering portion of this animation had sort of a pyro theme. I know that this is a small change, but honestly, it makes such an impact and I love it. 
Overall, I'm really proud of what we were able to do with Falcon Punch. The next thing that we needed to address was Falcon Kick and Raptor Boost. I know I'm quoted saying that the original effects look fine in Vanilla Melee, but these are some of the most phoned in textures in the base game. The resolution is ass, the textures are ginormous, the flames look clipped from like a disposable camera photo, and to be honest, I sort of get the impression that they struggle with this effect quite a bit. I know that they were under some serious time constraints, so no flame here. Boo! The first thing I wanted to address was this sort of weird jagged yellow thing. I did some digging into the game files and Falcon Kick is actually internally referenced as JPEG Foot Barrage, so I knew this had to be fixed. I must have played with 17 or 18 different versions of this attack before I finally realized something that would be critical to the overhaul of Falcon as a whole. Crisp, clean HD textures actually feel kinda off for these types of moves. There's a lot of power, speed, heat, and impact to these attacks that is completely lost when the textures are too clean. So I ended up going back through and adding motion blur, great in opacity, and overall grunginess to each of the effects. It sort of broke my heart though, because I was a little obsessed with providing ultra spiffy HD textures to sort of like fix the original low res ones, but again, playability and feel over everything. After that, it was just a matter of crafting new textures and effects that felt more intentional and sort of breathed new life into the old moves, rather than trying to redesign the whole thing from scratch. I know I've said it before, but the goal here is to make these moves the best they can be while keeping the gameplay feeling as similar as possible. I'm personally a huge fan of how Falcon Kick looks in the air now, and I'm really excited to see someone frame trap their opponent with this version of the overhaul. For Raptor Boost, it was mostly the same story. I needed to overhaul the effect to still feel right while in motion, but I couldn't change it so much that it threw off the gameplay. By overhauling some of the surrounding particle effects like I did with Falcon Punch, I was able to amplify the base impact of the attack, and then it was just a matter of replacing the fireball texture. I probably did like 20 versions of this texture until I found one that really hit all my criteria, and I couldn't help but include a little easter egg in there as well. As a child, someone pointed out to me that the Falcon Punch attack actually had a Falcon in it, and I just remember thinking how awesome that was. And maybe I'm a little dumb for not noticing that, but I was legit like five, so whatever. I wanted to do something similar for Raptor Boost, so if you look closely on the final frame of the attack, you can actually see a little Falcon in the fireball. When I first started getting stuff together for this pack, I was pretty confident that this overhaul would be a breeze, but honestly, it's been a massive learning curve. Not to mention that it still ended up being like 20 individual textures that needed to be created. So like rough estimate here, but I think I ended up doing five to 20 versions of each, and that would mean that the PNG graveyard had to be in the hundreds. Rest in peace. Anyways, moving along. If you're new here and you'd like to try the overhaul, please head over to the Animele GFX Patreon and consider subscribing. Patrons decide what we overhaul next, so be sure to join now if you'd like to help shape the future of this project. The established model for releasing these packs is to release the changes about a month early for the patrons, and then release the previous builds to the public for free as the new updates roll out. Speaking of which, last month's overhaul is now free for everyone to download, so definitely go try that if you haven't already. Additionally, I'm going to be releasing a version of the Falcon Punch overhaul for free to everyone right now as well. This pack won't include HD textures or the specific Falcon Punch overhaul, but it will include all of the other changes in dat patch form if you'd like to try it out. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video and leave your thoughts. All of the feedback is tremendously helpful as I build these, so feel free to let me know how you're feeling about everything in the comments. And I want to give a special shout out again to all the patrons. The Patreon is doing so much better than I could have ever anticipated, and it's allowed me to bring new people onto the project to make each update really shine. I've got some really big plans for the future, and I promise every dollar will be put to good use. With that being said, I'm Professor Randall, this is the Animele GFX project, and I'm going to get back to it. Cheers. Yo, this is Chief Neef. I'm gonna be showing you guys my process making this model, and hopefully you'll learn some things about melee model editing. Since this is anime, it has to fit in with that aesthetic, so I got to thinking. And I did remember there is an F-Zero anime, but spoiler alert, the Falcon Punch in it is just, he's just punching a guy so hard that electricity comes out. You know, there's no bird. Then I decided to look at the Falcon Punch and Smash Ultimate, and I think it actually looks perfect for what I'm going for. It's very cartoony, but also very beautiful looking, so it would fit right in with anime. Now I have to export the model. So to do that, I'm using DAT Texture Wizard. This is a program that rips open your Melee ISO and shows you all the good stuff inside. But wait a minute, what the f is a DAT file? DAT is a special file type developed by HAL Laboratories for use with their SysDolphin development suite. A SysDolphin was a collection of software, tools, programs, things that could help the game artists spit out as many assets as they could in Melee's very small development time. So that's how they went from looking like this in Smash 64 
to looking like this with melee. Unfortunately, we don't have access to any of Sis Dolphin, so we can't open this file up with it. However, the big brain Diploage has developed a solution, HSD RAW. This is an editor that allows you to open up DAT files and view the structures inside. So once inside HSD RAW, I can navigate to the Falcon Punch model and export it to a format that a modern program like Blender can open. I'm just going to skip straight to the finish model and then explain backwards what I did. Here's the finish model and it looks way different but that's just because I have vertex color displayed instead of textures. So vertex color is basically painting these individual points on a polygon, so these vertices here, and you assign a color to those, so we can do that in vertex paint mode. So if I want to make them blue, I can do this. And you'll see I'm giving all these individual points a color. So why did I use that? Well, initially I just planned on painting the white outline effect over the textures, but testing in game, I realized the texture has a scroll animation on it, so the effect wouldn't work. So I decided to use vertex color since you can overlay that on top of the texture and it won't scroll with the texture. Another useful thing with vertex color is the fade out effect. So all these black and gray parts near the end, that's where it's gonna fade out. And this was very useful with these trails here since in the original model, there's just a jarring you know, cut off. So this looks much better. I also upped the poly count of the model, so it's much more detailed now. You know, the legs aren't looking like PS1 drumsticks. And finally, the last change I made was opening up the beak. So originally, I wanted to do an animation to match the sound effect that plays in game, but I found that the entire Falcon Punch animation is just so short that you wouldn't even notice it opening. So I just left it permanently open and the effect works much better. There's one last change I want to make and that is adding pixel processing, which is just fancy blending effects. So this is what the model looks like without it. And now here's the model with pixel processing. It's a little glitchy looking in HSD RAW, but in game it looks really good. One minor issue I had with this, it's a little washed out looking on brighter stages like Yoshi's but on darker stages like Battlefield, it looks really good. So there you go, that's how I made this model. Uh, definitely an abridged explanation, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I plan on making some beginner-friendly tutorial videos, and I mean like super beginner-friendly. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to my YouTube. Peace.